My name is Luke. And I'm Alba. And this is our beautiful van, Gracie. <laughs> So our van is a 20 year old LDV convoy, she was made in the year 2000. So she's a 2.5 litre diesel and even though she's big and heavy, she's surprisingly good on fuel. Also diesel is actually cheaper in Spain than petrol. So there's now two colours, we've got white on the top and this new blue on the bottom. So even though she's 20 years old, she looks brand new and nice and fresh. So we painted the wing mirrors, the wheels and the bumpers in a chrome effect paint. So the van's 5 metres long. 2.8 meters high and about 2 meters wide. So there's not much else on the outside. We've got a standard spare tire underneath. The diesel heater that was already on the van is down the front here as well, again underneath. Um, painted the rear wheels as well. Painted the rear bumper. One of the first jobs we did was add the parking sensors. Um, as I said, it's five meters long and it's a big van. So it just makes it a lot easier when we're trying to reverse or get into a tight space. Um, it did come with a tow bar although we're probably never going to use it. And other than that, everything at the back was just tidying up and doing the, doing the paintwork. So if you remember from one of the first videos, on this side, there was a big hole where it had a vent, uh, as this is where the fridge sat. So that hole has been completely filled in. And one of the other things that was really horrible on the van is it had an extra bit of plastic trim stuck around the wheel arch here, um, mainly because the original wheel arch had started to rust away. So when we painted it, one of the things we did was blended everything in so that it just looks like one, one nice piece again. And we're really pleased with how that turned out. So another job we did, when we first got the van, this glass was the same as the window at the top so you could see through into the van. Partly for insulation and partly because it gave us a bit more storage. We painted the inside of the window black and then put some insulation behind. And this has allowed it, one, to look nice and private from the outside and two, we've actually got a small cupboard on the inside, which we'll show you later. So around this side, and we've got the same thing with the wheel arch here. On this side, we had a water hookup and an electric hookup that came with the van. It wasn't what we wanted, so we got rid of that. We reused one of the holes um, to add some ventilation. This is for our gas and for the fridge. Um, and the other hole has been completely filled in and you can't even see where, where it was. We've also painted the, the fuel cap in the same chrome that we use for the wheels and the wing mirrors. This window here has had the same treatment as the small window on the front passenger door. So it's well insulated and again it adds some privacy. Uh, and also this is where the kitchen is behind this window, so we couldn't have a window here anyway. And also on this side we've got the extractor fan. Uh, and this is the vent where all of the air gets blown out of the van. So now moving on to the inside. So at the front it's a standard right hand drive. Um, which while we're in most of Europe is a bit of a pain but luckily with all the windows in the van it's relatively easy to drive and there's hardly any blind spots. Um, to get around we use an iPad for music and navigation. Make sure you check out my other videos as I do a full in-depth video on how we use the iPad for sat nav and music and everything we need um, while we're driving. Also at the front we've got the speakers up the top here that we've built into the overhead storage. Um, we use these one while we're driving uh, and also as music to play in the van or if we're watching movies. Both of these doors drop open um, and they're not very well organised at the moment but we've just got some extra tools, um, tape and a few other random bits that have been thrown in there. So the other things down the front, this control here is for our diesel heater. So this is the heater that heats up the whole of the back of the van. Um, it's really efficient, really easy to use. Above we've got the control for the Bluetooth adapter, so the music from the iPad comes through here and it allows us to control volume and skip skip songs and things like that. Behind here we've got the chargers, so also while we're driving our electronics can be charging um, off of the engine. Also down the front here is where we keep our fire extinguisher. Um, and then above that we've got a little bit of storage and a handmade <laughs> armrest just to make driving a little bit more comfy and also a bit more storage under under here. And then the space that we've got behind our behind the driver's seat, um, these are all the aluminium uh, insulation that we put on each of the windows. Um, they work really well. One in the summer, they keep all of the heat, or most of the heat, out of the van. Um, and in the winter and at night, they keep all of that heat in the van and stop it getting too cold. Also behind here, we've got an extension to our kitchen countertop. Um, and the legs are stored down here for the table that we'll show you later. 
And the other thing that you can see at the front here, we actually keep our winter coats and the bedding on my driver's seat. Um, we did build storage for them, um, but it just takes up so much space and this space is, is never used. We don't sit on it while we're parked up. So when we drive, we just move these to the back and when, as soon as we pull up, we put them back here. And the last thing at the front is our passenger chair is a swivel chair. So this spins round and gives us somewhere else to, to sit. So now Alva's going to show you around the rest of the inside. So this is our kitchen area. It's pretty big or it looks pretty big, but it's because we love cooking. So that's why we wanted a big space. So it's not same normally on car vans or camper vans are much tinier countertops, but this is like kind of normal size or so a little bit smaller. We've got here a two burner gas hub and then we've got an extractor fan that Luke made himself with uh, some pallet wood and then here under here there is one of the lights for the kitchen yeah <laughs> and a fan that Luke put in there and as you could see before outside there's the vent for the air that sucks in and goes out of the van. And here we always have our portable speaker. Also, we went for a really big sink. This is a small thing where we keep our washing sponge that it made from the natural fiber that comes from the zucchini. And yeah, it's natural. And this is for the soap. And yeah, we've got two taps. This is for the drinking water and this is for the normal water. So this one goes to a 25 liter tank and this one has 75 liter tank. And the water comes out with a pump. Each of them's got a different pump. So here we got the two switches. This one is for the drinking and this one is for the normal. So if I switch on, now you can see yeah it's a bit noisy but it's because we wanted to have the pumps in here so up here also it was kind of an empty space so we decided to make some shelf for the spices and we bought that little glass jars for the spices and they fit like perfectly in there they have a tiny lip in here and like this they don't slide in and out while we drive and these tiny hooks here are for our cups so we can put them in here while we are parked but when we drive when we drive we have to put them away because if not they do like <laughs> and yeah look build this space for our water bottles and it's perfect also they don't well they move a tiny bit but it's like the perfect place for them even if the kitchen is big enough we also have an extension that goes from here to all the way here that now Luke will show you how it goes so whenever we have more people coming or we do a big dinner or lunch or we need more preparation space we put that thing in here it extends the kitchen space so much that it looks like oh, I don't know I, it looks so big such a big kitchen <laughs> and now I'm gonna show you our cupboards up here we've got well also I wanted to show you that beautiful yeah they're beautiful uh how you call them handles handles like i love them and it's one of the things that i like most about the van we got these ones in most of the kitchen and cupboard areas this is the only drawer we have and you push it in and then pull it out and here we've got all our cutlery and some teas spices and some supplements and the spoons that we use for cooking and in these cupboards we have here some baskets to organize here we've got things like rice pasta quinoa and all of that stuff and underneath we've got all our plates and bowls and this is our here we also keep our shopping boards and some toppers and yeah on the other side we have our breakfast um, or street basket. <laughs> it's where we keep all the nuts, mostly oats and everything. 
and out of the baskets we got bigger things like milks, oils, chickpea jars, uh, canned peas and all of that stuff. Underneath we've got uh, our pans, we've got one small one, a bigger one and then a pan, a frying pan and then we keep our blender and the coffee kettle? Coffee pot. Coffee pot. Yes. And this one, it's our bathroom or... Yeah, it's more the bathroom cupboard <laughs> than kitchen cupboard. Here we keep the toilet paper, some uh, towels, like face towel and kitchen towels. And on this basket, we've got all our toothbrushes, uh, hairbrush, shampoo, mm, soap, and all of that stuff. And under there, we've got some of the cleaning products and yeah this is one of my favorite countertops because it's where we keep all our fruit and veg we bought that two baskets that are really beautiful and here this one is for vegetables this one is for fruits as you can see we love oranges in Spain they are amazing and they are on season now in winter time so they are really really young. fresh and orange juice <laughs> yeah. fresh orange juice every morning every morning and yeah under here we've got our fridge it's a 40 liter fridge it came with the van look build that extra door to match with the cupboards and also in the kitchen area we have the two switches for the lights so this one goes to the main lights and this other one goes to the kitchen light that we showed you before So under here we have some storage. We decided to have some lift up access into both of these units, partly because we ran out of wood to have in one big piece. <laughs> um, but also it's quite handy if we just want to get the things out from the top. Um, but they do also open like this. So in here we keep our bedding, our beach towels, the sarong for the beach. And in this one, we've got some of our pajamas, Again, some sort of slightly warmer things to wear at night if it gets a bit colder. Alba's got like three or four scarves because I don't know <laughs> why she likes scarves. And something that we really, really want to use and yet have still not used it. We've got a hammock down the bottom that, I don't know, we need to find a pair of trees that it will work on. <laughs> and also on this side, we've got the same click mechanism for the door. So they click in and that way they don't open while we drive. So when Alba shows you the kitchen, she showed you that we had our normal water tank was a, in total 75 litres. Now that's 75 litres because as this comes off and in here we've got two 25 litre tanks and there's another one of these tanks underneath the, the kitchen unit. Um, this just ended up the best way for us to do it without paying for a custom built tank to fit underneath the van or something like that this just made it easy for us and gave us lots of storage for water so to fill these up we normally stop at fuel stations and they normally got quite a long hose that stretches into the van um, if not this piece does also come off and we have to take the white bottle outside and fill the bottle up from the outside so then to get the water from these tanks into the tank underneath the kitchen unit we've got a multi-function tool so it's actually our outdoor shower um, this bit is just a submersible pump it drops down into the tank and then with the shower head disconnected so normally this is our our shower head for outside but with that disconnected we put this into the other tank turn it on and we move all the water from the one tank into the other tank so this is a close-up of the water tank under the kitchen unit but the two filler caps on the top one of those goes down into the drinking water tank the other one goes down into the normal water tank you can also see the pumps that sit behind these two tanks. And then finally we've got one more cupboard on the end um, where we keep most of our electrical devices and cables and, and things like that. Also in this cupboard is the switch for the batteries. Um, so if we've had a few cloudy days and we need a bit more charge for our batteries which we'll show you in a minute, um, we can turn the switch on while we're driving and the engine will help charge our batteries. And then up here, this is mostly Alba's special shelf. <laughs> um, 
we did want to put more storage on on the top but we wanted to keep it more open but Alba was very clear that she wanted a bookshelf in the van so we managed to make this out of some of the leftover wood um, to go on and, and fill the shelf with all of her lovely books um, and also one or two. <laughs> They're lovely, aren't they? <laughs> They're lovely, lovely. Very important. Most used bit of the van, miss, for Alba. You silly. And then uh, finally, over here, we've got our ukulele, um, which at some point I'm going to get back into playing. <laughs> And another request from Alba <laughs> is the mirror. And the final part of our kitchen area is the vent for our diesel heater. This is where all the lovely hot air blows out if we need it. The diesel heater actually came with the van. Although we plan to spend all our time in hot places, we are really glad we kept it. It heats the van up really quickly and efficiently. It's connected directly to the main diesel tank on the van, so it's always ready to go. Something we forgot to film is the table that we set up at the back of the van. We use this sometimes to eat on, but more often if we're going to spend a long day working on the laptops, we set the table up so we both got somewhere that we can sit and work. The top of the table itself fits handily underneath one of the sofas, and the legs fit down behind the driver's seat as we showed you earlier. So now to the back of the bus, where we have our two sofas that fold out into our bed. So we both wanted somewhere comfortable where we could sit and work. So for us, we decided to go for this sofa option rather than a fixed bed, because the two main things that we wanted were somewhere that we'd be able to sit and work and sit and relax. But also we wanted the feeling of space in the van. And we feel that being able to walk all the way from the front to the back of the van and to see all of the floor really opens up the van rather than having a full size bed permanently out at the back. So underneath the sofas, we've got storage for my clothes and ours clothes. There's also a bit of a garage at the back where we keep some of our most needed tools. Then on the other side, we've got some of the controls for the solar panels and a drawer full of bags. <laughs> well then, we've got our backpacks and grocery bags and yeah, that kind most, of works. Most yeah. girls have got a thing with bags. Albers isn't with designer bags, it's with bags for shopping, bags no, for no, vegetables. No, no, listen, listen. This is our grocery bag and under here is Luke's backpack and under Luke's backpack is my backpack. So that's all that it takes this row. <laughs> I think there's about 30 bags in this row. Oh. <laughs> At night, if we want to watch a movie, or have a bit more space on the sofas. We ended up with a split frame system for the bed. So we can pull out just one side of the bed frame. And then we just spin these cushions around, tread on the bin. Ouch. Something else we forgot to film is also how our bed works. So here you can see me putting our normal sofas into a U-shaped sofa. From here, it's simple to pull the other half of the bed out, fold the cushions down, and this is how our bed looks. The main reason we wanted this is to be able to pull up on a beach somewhere, open the back doors, and enjoy sunrise or sunset from the bed. But now, back to the tour, and back to our sofa. And this way we can sit back and enjoy a film. But you may have noticed we don't have a TV and that's because we've got a hidden projector. So up here in the ceiling, this just clicks down and the projector sits in this little hole here. And then down the front, we've got our hidden projector screen. If you want to see more on how the projector and the projector screen work, I've got a couple of videos on the channel as well, showing you all the details of how the sound, projector and everything, everything were. So make sure you check them out. Okay, so then the reason why there's not as much storage under this sofa is because this is where all of our batteries are stored. So... So... Luckily we don't have to get to them that often, so we don't have to take these off. But under here, we used some recycled wood from the original van. 
So this was actually a cupboard that used to be in this back corner, but now it stores all of our batteries. We've got 410 amp hour AGM batteries. So for 440 amp hours in total. These are pretty much always charged by the solar panels that we have on the roof, um, which we'll show you in a minute. Um, but as I said earlier, we also have the option to charge these off of the engine while we're driving as well. So these batteries run into an inverter um, and this inverter then gives us power for our laptops, the fridge and things like that. So also down here, we've got the fuse box for the 240 volt system um, and also all of the 12 volt fuses in here as well. And then right down the end here, we've got our solar charge controller. Um, so this is what brings in the power from the solar panel and connects up to the batteries. In here, we've got a little drawer that's got more cables and plugs and chargers in general. <laughs> So that pretty much sums up all of the interior. Um, of course, we should mention all of the wood. So almost everything that we built in here, we tried to use recycled wood. So all of this is all recycled pallet wood. Same with the extractor fan and all of the framework for the kitchen and around the beds and everything either already came out of the van as it was, um, or again, we reused old pallet wood. Um, all of the countertops, um, we did buy new wood and same for the doors. So one thing that we did have to buy all new um, was the wood cladding for the walls and the ceiling. Um, but we're really pleased that we did because we think it's come out really, really well. And something else we're really pleased with is the roof vent. So this is the original roof vent that came with the van. Um, it's just a basic one that just opens and shuts like that. But I was really pleased we were able to extend the drop um, as the wood, as the cladding that we added on, added on an extra inch or so. So now I'm going to take you up onto the roof. We didn't have time in the end to order a nice ladder, so we quickly used again some of the leftover wood from the countertop and built this sort of handmade, handmade, nice amazing ladder. ladder. <laughs> and it works perfectly. So we close this in the door like this. The two knots stop anything from coming through. And then we use the sofa as the first step. And then we're up. So now we're up on the roof, you can see our solar panels. At the front, we've got two 100 watt each flexible solar panels, giving us 200 watts. And at the back, we've got one larger 150 watt panel. The panel at the back, as you can see, can be tilted in any direction. So we can always make sure it's facing the sun and giving us a lot more power. I would highly recommend doing something like this as it makes a huge difference in the winter when we get a little bit less sun and also when the sun is not directly above the van for as long during the day. So thank you for watching our van tour video. We hope you liked it. I'm sure we've missed loads so if there's anything you'd like to know please feel free to drop us a message or comment below. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye. I hope you enjoyed that content. Um, if you hadn't noticed, we do have an ebook that we sell, uh, and the link is just in the description. Uh, it contains 160 pages crammed full of practical advice, walkthrough information, electronic schematics, and part lists, which will make your job a lot easier for doing a van conversion and it will save you time and money. Also, we've created special videos for the ebook which enable you to see walkthroughs for how to do loads of things in the van conversion. So that's for water systems, for electrics, for how to do simple woodwork joints that anyone can do. And I really believe that anyone, regardless of their experience, can make a half decent van conversion. Thanks for watching, we really appreciate you watching our content and we put a lot of effort to make it interesting, informative and find those cool projects to feature on our channel. Consider subscribing, leave a comment and we'll see you next week.